uh, journalist that I followed her work for many, many years in a magazine uh, publisher. And then talk about uh, the uses in GIS uh, inside the user. So my first encounter with GIS was when I first learned that uh, the University of Redlands was awarded a very significant grant by the Small Business Administration to assist small medium enterprises here in the Inland Empire with, um, with spatial analysis. So I applied for that program and I was the startup that was selected. And as a result, that uh, Professor um, Abhijit Sarkar, uh, Sarkar and Richard Green, who has co-authored books on GIS with Professor James Pig, uh, worked on, on my uh, distribution and geomarketing analysis for two years. And also the result was a 78-page, very detailed report that's online, available online. And that was my first encounter with GIS. I had uh, left my, my reporting job with El Pinion and my editor job with the Press Enterprise to become a, an entrepreneur and, and launch my, my magazine. Um, I was fascinated. I got hooked with GIS. I was fascinated. They were able to, um, I'm just going to share a couple of maps. They were able to do segmentation maps. This is small publisher. My, my distribution, my circulation was small. But those maps were very powerful because they show the, the, the degree of penetration. And we used the tapestry segmentation, so I was able to show my advertisers what my, my target audience, what, you know, what kind of live book they have, what would they consume me. Uh, what language they spoke, what were they buying, what were they buying patterns. So that was very, this is, this is a, a map being done uh, as part of that SBA program of uh, grants, uh, just um, a part of LA of where our magazine was on the newsstands. And the nationwide, um, they were able to map the Barnes and Nobles uh, stores where we had the magazine and Again, because a, a very small publisher, this was very, uh, I know it's a cliche that a photo is, is worth a thousand words, but for us it was even worth more because we were able to convey to tough advertisers that even though we were a small company, we were in not that many places in, in terms of nationwide, we were in top DMAs like Los Angeles and was in the East Coast. And we were also able to make our case with borders once we showed them the map that there was a benefit for them in carrying our, our magazine, of course, that was before they shut down. Uh, but it, it also gave us an opportunity to look at uh, cluster areas. And one of the many maps in the report uh, looked at this area in Santa Ana, uh, where there's a big concentration of wedding uh, businesses and our distribution points. So for, for us, um, it gave us an opportunity to be able, as a business, to be able to determine where we were going to allocate resources for either targeting advertisers or in, in, in terms of our um, uh, coverage, we wanted to also be able to cover uh, rides in that, in that Orange County area. Um, now from the editorial perspective, I mean that I worked for the Press Enterprise. The Press Enterprise had a, a four-part series last October in November on raising the grade. They analyzed the necessity to um, have a better workforce, a better trained workforce here in the Inland Empire. And what I liked about this um, this four-part report is the interactive, and, and I think it's you know again going back to what Ron and Doug said, is, is all these challenges of now that media is evolving and our consumer is. Um, is, is more tech savvy and they're consuming news in a different way. I, I thought this was great, and this is just a screenshot, but in and, and, uh, and the online edition, the reader could move the map and be able to go to different legends and be able to see based on um, what they were, what city they were looking in particular in the Inland Empire, what was the unemployment rate for the city, what was the median income, and what was the education need um, for that population segment. So I thought that was very significant because now you're, you're in, in, now, you know, with mainstream, what's happening with mainstream um, publications is very different to what's happening with ethnic media. So I, I think it's very important that uh, there's engagement with the reader and that the reader with this interactive maps have that opportunity to be able to, to um, learn more about their communities. And in my uh, marketing for GIS class, we had a visit by Brenda Wolf of Astro, she's a product manager. 
And when I told her about my interest in, in uh, covering Hispanic media and in the Hispanic market, she shared this, uh, this project she worked on. And this is just a screenshot. She has a tutorial online. After the ESRI conference in San Diego last year, she was approached by the, by the eWater Institute. And they asked her if through community analysts, would they be able to find out about uh, you know, what areas had civic engagement? Is it, was there something there? So she played with the, with the community analysts. She went on to get reports for behavioral, um, behavioral statistics for, for different parts of the U.S. And uh, for that one, she, there's, there, if you scroll down, there's different sections that you can look at, like political participation in the last 12 months. And I thought this was significant to show because we're in an election year. And she went ahead and she chose the, the city of Bell after the LA Times broke the scandal of the corruption that that city had with its uh, politicians. There was very uh, low civic participation. So she chose the city of Bell. And she found out through that behavioral survey, when, when she did the overlay in the city of Bell, she found out that um, the characteristics of uh, high percentage of Hispanic population, uh, low income, and uh, they had not participated in the last 12 months, they had not participated in politics. So she, what she did was an analysis of other similar surrounding areas with the same features and just to learn from other communities, but with a higher participation in politics. So it's very interesting, and I, I that is on, on the ESRI website, it's a tutorial. And to me, that was interesting because, like I said, my interest in, is in Hispanic media, ethnic media, so versus what's happening, and you know, with the LA Times and the Orange County Register, that they, for the past decade, have already adopted this GIS, interactive mapping for storytelling, ethnic media hasn't. So one of my goals is, as I learn more about GIS, is to be able to share that knowledge with others in, in ethnic media. I am um, part of the 78 report that uh, the University of Redlands did for the, my magazine distribution. I shared it at a convention with the National Association of Hispanic Publications uh, two years ago. And there are magazine publishers and newspaper publishers from throughout the U.S. And they were very interested in the results because um, my experience before the SBA grant with the Press Enterprise and with La Pignon of mapping was just uh, solely dedicated to marketing efforts. And it was just, the mapping was there, but it was just part of the media kit. It wasn't yet part of the storytelling. So they had, they had, they had mapping of circulation because that's an important component of every media outlet. But it, it, they didn't have anything in, as in depth as what the University of Redlands did. So I, I really think, um, at least in the ethnic media, I think it's an anti market. I really see a lot of growth and I really see a lot of um, more investigative reporting from ethnic media. And um, uh, again, I, I think because of how the landscape is changing, I know um, Doug mentioned, you know, why is it not translated into more eyeball? I really think now with rich media and we have a younger generation, why they're tech savvy. So I, I really think it, it's it's um, it's in growth mode, and I really think there's there's a boom. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to learn more about GIS. You know what I've learned so far is that our GIS, the business analyst online, and the community analyst, because that's what we're using for the class. But uh, I also think it's important to have the, the open source and have those. Uh, you know, the Google Fusion tables available. You know, the Google so that's Fusion tables available. So that's my um, that's my experience as, as a business owner and as a journalist. Yes, thank you. So here, I believe we are the second set of panelists on GIS and business. And I think I should start by telling you that we differ from your first set of panelists and the third, the fourth, and however many others in one very important respect. We are not specialists in GIS. We don't, except for a billion, have degrees in GIS. We don't have specialists in GIS. We are improvisers. We use tools that others invent try to get things done. We do them in a hurry. We 
hope to God that we get things right. <laughs> oh, Lord, do we hope. <laughs> now, we have been driven to GIS by a couple of perennial stories and by one great fear, bordering, at times crossing the border, into terror. Those two perennial stories are the census, which used to come along once a decade and now hits us once a year thanks to the American Community Survey, and elections, which now is basically all the time. That fear which has now crossed the line into terror is the internet. I'm going to give you a few examples starting back with the 2000 census where we started using at the register RGIS in a big way to show you how we started using uh, mapping to convey the huge <coughs> mountains of information that we were getting and using maps to tell people what we were finding. Possible, right? However, it wasn't. And the reason was because, A, it was so easy to use art by this time that I could actually draw flat line maps in a matter of an hour for each of the four decades. And B, there were so many tools available to take these maps and convert them to interactive maps that could be done, could be made interactive just basically in a matter of another two hours. So I took the art maps, made them in, I think, about two hours, and converted them to an interactive map using a free program called GeoCommons in another two hours. Here is the result. Immigrant workers by county, and I'm going to show you 1970. Can you see that? And I'm going to click on LA. 14.4%. 1980. 1990. Notice how it's getting progressively darker. That's greater Los Angeles. And 2008. <coughs> Again, this only took a matter of hours. In 2000, this would have taken days. And this was done while I was preparing the story for immediate publication. Now, over the last couple of years, reporters around the country have looked for a variety of alternatives to explore mapping, going beyond Clem's favorite product, ArcGIS, uh, to other alternatives, including QGIS. And I want to show you one map that I've created using QGIS, and it is here. This is a map showing diversity in Orange County and using entirely uh, an interactive map created there, I was able to show diversity within Orange County. This took, I believe, one day. Not a great map, but it was doable. However, the thing that is now grabbing most of the mind share of journalists around the country is not ARC or QGIS, it's Google Fusion Tables. And here's an example of Google Fusion Tables. And the advantage of Google Fusion Tables, and let me go back and show you the weakness here. You cannot zoom in on this map. You have to add this index by yourself manually, unlike what you can do with ARC. 
with Google Fusion tables, it's comparatively easy to zoom in. And as you zoom in, you can see whatever you want to see. I'm about to run out of time, and Jim's about to give me the hook. So I want to leave you with some uncomfortable questions that I think people in my business have not yet asked and need to be asking. Just how dependent should an allegedly for-profit business, even marginally for-profit business, such as the Orange County Register and the LA Times, be on a voraciously for-profit business, such as Google. How does a business such as the Register or the Times manage to build its own look and feel into a product such as this, which carries so prominently <coughs> Let's see if I can get it. Pardon me? The slide bar that's on the far right, just move that down to the bottom. Yeah. which carries so prominently a Google logo on it. You're dynamically moving the map. You want to move that slider bar that's on the far right. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. And then you'll see the little logo. Yeah, it, it's there. <laughs> and finally, and this for me is really the most uncomfortable question of all, I have been saying to my editors, perhaps far more often than it's wise, that mapping would be the killer app, the thing that would bring eyeballs to new sites. The only problem with having uh, Ron and me on the same panel is that Ron and I have been Trying down the same path for so long that the basically what you're going to get from me is the same story told again. Um, in terms of GIS, you could call it, uh, uh, me and Ron original gangsters. Uh, we uh, we both started using GIS in the 1990s. I started with a program called Atlas GIS. Anybody heard of that? Actually, they have on some other Atlas users back there. I think I still have the CD that cost us a thousand dollars. My introduction to GIS was uh, it, on the news, news gathering side, and I at, at that time and this was before the internet was really uh, as robust and useful as it is today. I was assigned in the San Fernando Valley, which is a large portion of Los Angeles that has a, an identity of its own, but politically has no identity uh, that is, for example, recognized by the Census Bureau. So we, we had an edition of the LA Times that focused on this area of about 1.2 million people. And our job was to treat it as an entity unto itself within the city of Los Angeles. But you couldn't get any information about the valley at all. The, 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 the Census Bureau did not tabulate the valley so the uh, advent of, uh, I was already using desktop uh, database management, and the advent of the desktop GIS provided the obvious answer. You, you gather you, together all the census tracts of the San Fernando Valley, and then you put the information into it and augment, uh, aggregate it up, and then you can start talking about what's the San Fernando Valley in terms of uh, uh, population, income, family structure, 
commuting patterns, all of the things that we look to the census to tell us about. And, and uh, in, a, in a way, we're still doing that. We're still using GIS as a reporting tool. Uh, but the, of course, we also use it to present information. And uh, this is an example the, the, of a map. This is a very uh, a simple, rudimentary map. But, it, but we use it to tell an interesting story. It's, it's the story of, of gay marriage in America and where it's, uh, where, uh, what are the different policies on gay marriage by state. Uh, this, this map was essentially created by hand. But uh, it's, it's a good illustration of, of the sort of the marriage of, of GIS and newspapers. For us, we're storytellers. We, we need a story. And the, if, if you've heard uh, the, the basics of journalism, a, a good news lead answers five questions, who, what, where, why, and when. And obviously, uh, a map relates very closely to the where part. But it also relates to other things as well, to the who and to the to the when. So uh, I'll show you a this is a, a, a map, and we're we're constantly looking for new ways of answering those questions with maps. Uh, here's one. This this is a map that we did for a story about Latinos in the South, and. Uh, it's a very simple map, but we wanted to look at the Latino population, and this was actually by city block. Of a, uh, this, this was a story that focused on Latino taxi cab drivers in a small city called Gainesville, Georgia. And we wanted to show the, the change in Gainesville over the uh, two decades. So this is a simple slider that you, you look, here you're looking at one decade, and as you slide it across, you're looking at the next decade. So uh, again, this is a, not a tremendously sophisticated map, but it tells a good story. It, and it, it, it adds to the where, it adds the when. Uh, now, back to today. Uh, the, we also love the internet because um, because it lets you play with the maps. And uh, we, we it lets you put them uh, sort of lets you put them on a shelf, and they may sit there on the shelf for um, six months or, or or whatever, and then something happens, and everybody's curious about that thing. And the problem when you put a map in the newspaper, then it's in, it, it goes into what we call the morgue, and six months later you can go out and maybe reprint it again, but keep uh, people can't really play with it, so. Today is a, is, is a day when everybody's going to be wanting to know about, about Proposition 8. And we happen to have a collection of maps. This is one that tells you who uh, put in the money for Proposition 8. And if you, uh, we're, we're looking at now those who wanted to oppose it. And these are proportional circles that, that, that um, point to cities. And then you can get, you can mouse over and get the, uh, the numbers for those cities. And then if you want to see the other side, you can click on the map uh, on, the, on the other bar. So uh, we've come from, I mean, I've, I've just, in particular, I've come from wanting to use GIS to gather information that, that I could use to understand an area. And we've now moved into the, 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 the sort of very lively, interactive world. And... Um, but we're still we're still looking at the, the same sort of methodology. One of the projects that we worked on last year was to do what we call mapping LA, and this the same thing I did for the San Fernando Valley. We did for the whole city of Los Angeles, which is an area of three and a half million people, almost four million people. That is. Uh, very diverse. It, it has uh, it, it has a harbor with a very unique character. It has the San Fernando Valley. It has the West Side with Hollywood. It has Century City downtown. All these areas that are that are diverse and different, but.
But whenever you look at statistics on them, it's, it's this, this big plug in the middle of Los Angeles County. So we, uh, it took us about a year to do, building the city from census blocks, individual city blocks up. There are uh, something like 30,000 blocks in Los Angeles, and every one of them we've tagged with the name of a community, so that uh, when you want to know, you've heard of a place called Silver Lake. Uh, before Silver Lake, you, you might have heard of it thematically, people might talk about Silver Lake, but you don't really know what Silver Lake is like. Since we've now created Silver Lake from the, the block up, we are able to provide statistics, um, and unfortunately this is still, we're still using the census 20, uh, 2000, we haven't updated, we're just like on the verge of updating 2010, it turned out to be uh, a little bit more complicated than we had hoped. But this, this gives you a chance, and so we're always using uh, this when there's a story that, that references Silver Lake. They can go to this, look it up, and they can find what the, uh, what the demographics of Silver Lake are, what the income distribution is like, and, and uh, what, what families are like in Silver Lake. It, it, it's a, a very strong contextual tool. I think the future of where we're going with GIS, and as, as Ron alluded, there's a, a, it, it, Google is a, a, a problem. And we've been using Google's tiles on these maps, and I think for us the future is we're going to, Google's about to start charging an arm and a leg for those tiles. They've, they've been giving them out free to get everybody addicted, and now that they've got something, they're going to start charging. So one of the big projects we're going to take on this year is we're going to build our own tiles, uh, joining with the uh, with the open source community, which is all of these people all around the world that you never actually see, but they're all have joined in the internet community and they're they're building open layers that, that we can use to, to, to craft our own maps of Los Angeles. And then the other uh, the, the other area where we're headed is in, in using these uh, uh, mapping LA. Uh, not just as a, a, a way of displaying information, but as a way of making the newsroom smarter. And we're hoping in the next uh, couple of years to be able to uh, actually process news through the, the portal of Mapping LA so that stories get organized geographically in a way that makes sense to our readers. Uh, it, it, it's a, a, a huge technological challenge, especially since our IT department, the, the, the uh, Tribune Company, in its wisdom, sucked all of our IT into Chicago, so it makes everything we do much more difficult. But uh, we, we do hope that, that within a few years we'll, we'll be able to organize the news online in, in a way it's never been organized before, where it'll be ge geographically smart, and stories will know how to, how to, how to bring themselves together so that if, if you are looking at your computer in North Hollywood, you'll, you'll be able to see aggregations of stories that are about the area, either about North Hollywood or the area around North Hollywood. So that's, that's again, uh, I think another indication of how closely wedded the news business is to GIS. Thanks.